tonight. And then, Lord, as we as we pray for our pastor, as he would come to stand and preach and proclaim your word in the midst of worship, open up our ears, open up our hearts, and let us hear what your spirit has to say to us so that we can share with the whole world, God, what you have done. We love you today. We look forward to hearing from you today. God, would you rescue the lost? Would you encourage the discouraged? Would you bring hope to the hopeless? God, we love you today. We pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, who paid the price for our sins on that cross, who redeemed us so that we could be with you forever and ever and ever. It's in his name, the name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Family, are you ready to worship? Amen. Amen. Let us worship together.
<laughs> Let's sing that old Amazing Grace. All right. How sweet the sound. Fred, I think I'm going to call you out of retirement this morning, amen? Have you lead that thing for us. What you think, man? Somebody, somebody say, Freddy, 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 Freddy. <laughs> this morning. It's preaching time. If you'll open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 41 through 48. I have a slight ring. You can just turn me down over here just a tad bit. Thank you so much. Luke 12, verse 41 through 
48. This one, just turn it just a little bit. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise servant whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. And truly I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and he begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him. And he'll come at an hour when he's not aware. And he will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things that were deserving of stripes, he too shall be beaten with a few. And for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. And all God's people said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. For a title this morning, repeat after me. Today, Today. my pastor, pastor. is going to talk to you about a good look, a good look. at servanthood. Good. Amen. amen. Beloved, every now and then on this journey, you and I will run into those passages that reveal to us, Brother Ernie, the sacred understanding of what it means to be a servant of the Lord in the earth. Make no bones about it. The Bible is filled with passages that will arrest us and reveal to us how serious it is to be an obedient follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus in this passage today is yet again reminding the audience on last week that he's coming back again and that we have a sacred responsibility, Sarah, to be prepared to serve him until he comes. You see, on last week, he revealed to us two critical lessons. Y'all remember, he, he taught us about the urgency of preparation. In fact, he said, we ought to all be like the men who were expecting the master to return from the wedding feast. He said, those men were dressed, girded, and had the house prepared. He then gave us another picture. He said, we ought to all don't be like the man who wasn't prepared for the thief when the thief showed up. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. It was a challenge, that lesson was, and a command for the believer, the disciple, to be woke, to be ready, to be prepared, and to be looking for the coming of the Lord. And in today's text, uh, Deacon Martin, we get to see again, my brother, what it looks like to be waiting for the Savior, but to know the difference between a good servant and a bad servant. Yeah, yeah. And that's why this morning we want to look at servanthood. Yeah, what yeah. it looks like. I got two points. Somebody say two points. Two points. We're going to look at the good servant and the bad servant. Yeah. 
Look at somebody with your mask on, just nod at them. Good servant and bad servant. In verse 41, the text says, Jesus is still teaching, that then Peter interrupted him. Y'all know Peter. He said, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us? Or are you talking to all people? And the Lord said to them, Peter, whoever is a faithful and a wise steward, his master will make him a ruler of his household when he comes and give them a portion of food in due season. Or rather, his master will make him ruler for the one to do this work, to feed the people who are there in the house while the master is away. Verse 43, and Peter, blessed is that servant who when his master will come, will find that servant doing, Sister Wilson, what the Lord told him to do. And truly I say to you that he will make that servant a ruler over all that he has. Can I work right here? Beloved, when you come to this portion of the text, the first thing the reader sees is that Peter the preacher is asking Jesus a question. And this question, Zuniga, is a question that I think you and I will find important. See, he wants to know, Lord, are you talking to the preachers? Or is this parable for everybody? Can I say some more? Now, I wouldn't normally be alarmed at anything, but Peter's question is powerful. Because Peter wants to know, is this or does this have anything to do with my ministry that you're talking about? Or is this particular story or parable for everybody in general? And you know what I like, Sister Carla? Jesus does not answer his question directly, but yet he answers his question with another story. It's an answer indirectly, which implies, no, Peter, this ain't just about your ministry. This is about everybody's ministry. Are y'all with me here? In other words, every servant that's faithful in doing what the Lord, daughter Nina, has called them to do is the one who's going to receive the benefits of working for the Lord when he comes. Can I park the car right there? If you a mom servant, you a daddy servant, you a child servant, come on, talk to me. Whether you're working for the IRS or climbing telephone poles, if you're doing it in the name of the Lord and in honor of the Lord, guess what? There'll be a reward when he comes back. I like this. The Bible says in verse 42 that Peter, Reverend Nichols, or Jesus says, Peter, rather, a faithful servant is somebody, he gives a description, that the master can give the responsibility, watch this now, of managing his other household servants and feeding them. In other words, in this passage, Jesus is saying, Peter, this is supervisor, and he's managing others that are under him. In other words, in other words, Jesus is saying when he when the master returns, if he finds this servant has done a good job, then the reward comes. In other words, he doesn't just get a reward because he was a servant. He gets a reward because he did a what? A good job. Somebody holler good job. And once again, whoever and whichever servant has been given something to do and they do it for me while I'm away and they do a good job. When I come back, Brother Lynn, I'm going to rewind, remind, reward them. Third of all, we see in the text, Jesus is saying, I tell you the truth, Peter, not only will they get a reward, but they'll get a promotion. What do you mean? I, I'm going to give them more responsibility and more reward. I need to step back and unpack this because a lot of people think that when Jesus comes back for the church, that's it. We're out of here. We've been taken in the rapture where Christ is the head of the world government. Are y'all listening here? And those believers, stay with me, who have been working for him before he came will have positions, Reverend White, in the new government. 
that we will rule and reign according to his promotion that he gives us for a thousand years. Y'all in here now? So he, you understand what he's saying? He's teaching us that he's going. there's going to be a promotion involved for those who have faithfully served him. I thought I put that in there. I didn't tell the 8 o'clock that, but I'm glad y'all back. <laughs> Jesus literally is telling Peter in this passage, Peter, be faithful. That's what this is about. Be a faithful servant. Don't get distracted and be prepared for my second coming. Well, Jesse, I ran across a story this week I think you'll appreciate. There was a, a sister whose name was Marla Runyon. Sister Runyon was an Olympic game runner. Her event was the 1500 meter race. She was very unique in that she was a runner who ran with what you and I would call is a handicap. In 1996, Brother Roy, she tried her best to make the Olympic Games but was disqualified. But she didn't quit. She went back to work and four years later, she came to the Sydney Games in the year 2000. And she got the best time ever for a female runner from the United States. You say, well, Pastor, what's so important about that? Well, what makes her so important is that she was no ordinary runner. She ran blind. Did y'all catch it? She was the first female runner to run in the Olympics blind. And this sister could run. Well, after her, her placing in the 2000 games, her career was over, she went to now running marathons. And the key to her success and longevity in running was her faithfulness. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? See, as Sister Runyon was a faithful runner. Yeah. She didn't run to be successful, she ran to be faithful. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but that's a mighty good picture for a Christian in a weary land. God needs blind runners. He needs us to run with blind faith. He needs us to run in our own lane with our eyes on the prize. Part of the reason why we can't run the race, Sister Carla, we want to run, we're too distracted by all the other runners. We worried about what she running in. What he running in? Come on, talk to me. How come they got lane one and I'm in lane eight? Are you with me here? Just stay in your lane. Jesus ain't into you being successful. He's into you being what? Faithful. Can I turn the light on right there? Quit looking at what the other churches is doing. What's your church doing? Quit looking at what everybody else's family is doing. What is your family doing? Yeah. Be the best you you can be. Be faithful at what God has called you to be. And don't try to be successful because somebody else is successful. Peter, 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 Jesus wants Peter to know you're worried about Peter. Am I talking to you or am I talking about everybody? You just be faithful. Can I get a witness there? We've looked at a good servant. Let's look now at a bad servant. The Bible says in verse 45, as Jesus is telling this story, Jesus says, Peter, but if that servant I've just been telling you about, if he says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and he begins to beat the male and the female servants, and he begins to eat and drink and get drunk, that the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him, he'll come in an hour when he's not aware, and he will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew to do the master's will 
but who did not prepare himself or do according to the master's will, he's going to be beaten with many stripes. And but he who did not know, yet they committed things deserving the stripes, they too shall be beaten with a few. And I like this verse. For everyone, somebody say everybody. everybody. To whom much is given, much will be required. Yeah. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. Can I work right here, family? Thank you for your patience and your chivalry. <laughs> well, we'll be back in a while, and he starts partying, he starts drinking, he starts being evil, starts mistreating the other servants, then the master's going to come at an unannounced, unexpected time, and he's going to severely deal with the wicked servant. Well, i got to be honest with you today. Brothers and sisters, I didn't see the twist coming in this story. No, I didn't see Jesus telling a story about a good servant who had favor and blessings and rewards coming, and then all of a sudden he turned bad. I, I didn't see that, but Jesus saw it. And you know why I think he saw it sooner? Because he knows everything about me. He knows everything about you. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. He knows everything about humanity. And so he understood that the servant who was working and waiting on the master went from being somebody the master could trust to being somebody the master must punish. He went from being responsible to irresponsible. He was somebody, Brother Sean, the master thought he could invest in, but really he became an unwise steward. He, he was somebody, the master thought he could trust with his resources, but really he was an unreliable leader. He was somebody who was sinister instead of sincere. And as a result, Mother Ross, he disappointed the master. He, he disappointed the one who believed in him, who gave him a chance, who trusted him with resources, who invested in him and gave him an opportunity to prove his worth, his allegiance, his love, and his support. And here it is. He took the master stuff and started to party with it. He took the master stuff and abused it. He took the master stuff and spent it on himself. He took the master stuff and lived a wicked lifestyle. He took the master stuff and he didn't care that the master was coming back to get it. Can I say some more? Here it is, here it is, little Robert. This is what I call a gangster move. What do you mean, Pastor? This was a gangster attitude. It was a gangster mentality. He was exhibiting a gangster profile and a gangster mindset, literally was saying, I don't care if the master do come back. This stuff is mine now. Ever have somebody take your stuff like that? You leave them, let them borrow something, then they claim it as their own. Come on, talk to me. He says, I don't care if he does return. I ain't expecting him. I'm going to take his stuff and do what I want to do regardless to what he thinks. Here it is. And I'm going to be cruel to the people that he put me over to take care of until he comes back. Jesus says, if that servant says, uh, my master is delaying his coming, so I'm going to beat the male and the female servants. And I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink, and I'm going to get drunk. Beloved, when I look at this text, I don't know about you, family, but this is a bad servant. Yeah. This is a bad dude. In fact, this man is what you call a grade A fool. He's acting like he's all powerful. Yeah, yeah. And he ain't got nobody to report to. This was not his stuff, Brother Terry. These were not his people. All of these things he was responsible for belonged to somebody else. 
And according to the passage, uh, Brother Jazz, he actually beat the servants of the master. He beat the women and the men. He denied them the love, the care, and the respect that the master would give to them had he been present. Secondly, in this text, in his inebriation, he took pseudo power and belittled and betrayed the blessed privilege of his calling. Thought he was all that. When I look at this story and I look at his actions and activities, there are consequences for diabolical behavior. Can I say some more? Okay, can I say some more? Jesus said, I'm going to return and I'm going to cut it. <laughs> it's in the book. He's going to return and he's going to cut him, Sister Sandy, and I'm going to cut him in pieces. And I'm going to manage it. Now, y'all know when I read that, I was like, ooh, that's not nice Jesus right there. <laughs> no, that's not nice Jesus. But can I tell you why? Huh? Can I tell you why? Yeah. Nice Jesus is a Jesus. Of, uh, uh, nice Jesus is not a Jesus who just let people get away yeah. with injustice. Somebody holler at me, say, nobody, nobody. Gets, away. gets away. Jesus is going to make sure that everybody who's ever done wrong or evil gets what's coming to them. That's why the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Can I say some more? When I look at this and I look at the text, the bad servant got what he had coming soon ago because he was a bad servant. In other words, when the master understood what he did to those he loved, the master in his righteous indignation gave the servant the same thing he dished out. Can I say some more? According to this passage, yeah, the key word that the master uses in this verse, the master comes, cuts the bad servant in pieces, and banishes him. Watch this, here's the key word, with the unfaithful. Unfaithful is the key word. Sister Wilson, those who are unfaithful to the Lord are those who don't believe in the Lord. Ah, can I say some more red and white? Guys, ain't gonna be nobody in heaven who was unfaithful to him on earth. We keep trying to put gangsters in heaven and movie stars in heaven and haters in heaven. We think everybody going to heaven. Can I tell you, ain't nobody unfaithful going to be in heaven. There's a place with a reservation for the unfaithful. And according to this text, if you didn't have cognizance to be faithful to him on earth, I don't think heaven going to be your home, mama. He says, I'm going to cut him to pieces. And I'm going to send him, Brother Sean, to the place of the unfaithful. Can I tell you, as pastor, I'm through begging people Amen. to be faithful. If Jesus can't convince you, what I'm going to do? Amen. Amen. Come on, man. In this text, something. Why is this? Why is this so powerful? The bad servant, Sean, he models for us someone who is not just bad and unfaithful, but watch this, watch this, say, they are also unrighteous. And, and the unrighteous and the bad servant receives the unfaithful person's reward. In other words, everybody's got a stimulus check coming. <laughs> Whether you've been righteous or unrighteous, you're going to get paid. Y'all in here? Here it is. The person who never belonged to the master. This, this was this bad servant. He was in the house. He was in the house, Nichols, but he wasn't committed to the covenant. He was never convinced or sold out to serving him. And therefore, his behavior ended up being what it was. Uh, let me say it this way. What was on the in 
inside came on the outside. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. That's good. He was in the house with the servants. The master looked to him to give him an opportunity to be in right relationship. And when he got the chance, he misbehaved. Yeah. Took advantage of the master's stuff. Rejected, there it is, that's the word Zuniga. Rejected his covenant. And this is all I want you to know. If you really love the Lord, you're going to work for the Lord. Amen. You're going to give the Lord your all, Sister Cooley, when, when you really love him. It doesn't matter if he's here physically or if he's somewhere absent. You're going to do the same. I thought that was enough, but then verse 47 and 48 came. And in verse 47 of the text, Jesus explains the mentality of the unfaithful servant, of the bad servant, and why he received what he got when the master came back. In fact, the Bible says, yes. He received the punishment that he got, watch this, because he knew the master's will. Verse 47, and he did not prepare himself, there it is, Brother Ed, or do according to his will. Y'all catch it? He knew what the master expected and did not do, Sister Wilson, what the master expected him to do. I know y'all like me, you got all kind of names running through your head right now. Ain't that something? And then Jesus explains, not only did this one bad servant get beat with stripes and cut up, but there were also other servants that were punished also. These were the servants who did not know what the first servant knew. But they also, when they got the opportunity to misbehave, they misbehaved. They mistreated people. And as a result, they too received their wicked judgment. Now why is this important? It's important because I want you to know that they too got what's coming to them because justice is for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Can I say some more? Say some more and then Jesus says, for everyone to whom much is given uh -huh. from him or her, much will be required. Let me unpack this. I said this morning at 8 o'clock, North American Christians, sit up and get this. You're the richest continent on the planet. God has given you more than he's given any other nation. The poorest American is richer than the poorest beggar in Asia. And to whom much is given, much is required. You're going to give an account for your stuff. I know you feel like, I, I ain't having it, Pastor, like they oh. <laughs> Yes, you are, if you living in this country. Yeah. Are you with me here? To whom much is given, yeah. much is required. I'm off my text, y'all. I'm off my text because it's so, it's so scary for me saying, can I just let you in my closet? Two doctor's degrees, two master's degrees, a bachelor's degree, travel around the world, preaching this book. If anybody know better, to whom much is given, much is required. Can I say some more? I don't want to be the only one shaking. I'm gonna let y'all shake a little too. You sit under this teaching. Yes, sir. You can't walk around here like, well, ain't nobody told me. No. <laughs> I ain't been to Bible study. I ain't been to life groups. I ain't traveled on a mission. No, too bad. When you became a member, you became responsible. Oh, to whom much is given, much is required. 
That ought to keep you up at night. And then he said, and. <laughs> and. Somebody say, and. and. You know, that's that conjunction, right? It, it hooks up two moving thoughts. And to whom much has been committed, there it is, of him or her, they will ask the more. Not only has God given you something, Sister Carla, but he has committed you to do something with it. Yeah, yeah. And because he's committed you to do something with it, people have a right to ask you of it. Therefore, on that day when we stand before him, we'll be without excuse. I'm through, I'm through. I can't dump the whole truck on you. But, but I want you to know what, what, what he's getting at here. He's dealing with the bad servant. Here's what he's saying, here's what he's saying. Nobody is gonna get away. No bad servant, no wicked heart, no evil intentions, no enemy of God. Nobody's gonna be able to say, well, that was only my church for a little while. Too bad, the little while you was there counts. Ain't that right, though? A friend in my library opened this text to me. He said, A.W., you know that what Jesus is really getting at in this parable is he's encouraging you just to be faithful. Yeah, yeah. See, the apostles had a responsibility to feed God's household in his church, just like you. And each one of the believers that they fed, they also had a work to do in the earth. There are three things the believer must remember. Must remember, Bria. Number one, our responsibility, Bria, in the earth is to be faithful until he comes, not successful until he comes. Come it's not about how big your ministry gets. It's not about how many numbers or likes or followers you have. Be faithful. Number two, Number two, you got to remember that as soon as the believer stops to think that his master is not coming back, his relationships with others are going to change. Why? Because you're not looking for God to come back, so you'll treat people in the old kind of way. The third thing we got to remember is that the Christian life and service must be a desire to please the Lord, not about pleasing anybody else. Did y'all catch it? Those three things are critical. Well, I'm through. I gotta get out of here. It's cold, it's chilly. I'm grateful for you. But I wanna close with this story. Found this story, Mother Cindy, and it's about a little church that has some unfaithful members. There was one family, I'll call him Brother A. It was pouring down rain one week and he said, oh, it's raining too hard. I can't take my babies and my queen out in the rain to church. We gonna miss this service, Pastor. Stayed home from church that day, rained the next day. And they found out that there was a new exhibit coming to town at the museum up the street, so he called an Uber. Got his family inside. Couldn't come to church, but he went to the museum. Brother B was a hard-working man, Brother Zuluka. He put in hours, man, you know, on Saturday and Sunday. He had one day to relax. That was Saturday and Sunday it was for church. But he worked hard this week and felt like, you know, it's raining. I worked hard. I'm, I'm tired. I'm just going to stay at home. Brother Jesse stayed at home, and next thing you know, he found himself in the garage piddling around with some of his new projects. So instead of being in worship on the Lord's day, he was working in the garage. No time for God. And then there was Sister C. I like to call her a fashionista. It was pouring down rain and she said, girl, I can't go out there. I may fall in that slippery sidewalk. I think I'll stay home. Miss Sunday, worship, Monday rolled around, was still pouring down, but she had to go get her weave fixed. <laughs> and so the story is she put some stockings over her shoes so she could walk on the concrete and not slip and fall. 
You know, when I look at the text, the story goes on to say, this ain't my story, it was told to me through a source. Three-fourths of the members of that church stayed at home. The one-fourth and the pastor was present in worship. And God met them there. The other people were recognized by the empty seats. And the author of the story said, and God don't bless empty seats. When I read this story, I thought, wow, that's powerful. I don't want my seat to be empty in the house of God. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to online or online. You may be feeling like pastor talking about me. No, I ain't. This story ain't about you. It's about unfaithfulness. But since you brought it up, let me come down your way. If you can sit socially distanced at the restaurant, you can sit socially distanced in the parking lot. If you can sit socially distanced at Costco, you can sit socially distanced at New Beginnings. If you can be social distance at the doctor's office, you can be social distance at the pastor's office. If you can be social distance at your girlfriend's or your boyfriend's house, you can be socially distance at the Lord's house. If you can sit socially distance at the job, then you can be socially distance at the church. I just might preach out here. If you want to really practice faithfulness, then do something about your unfaithful mentality. I'm through when I go down this road, but I'm so glad I got a savior who's faithful. Said I'm so glad my God's been faithful to me. When I'm sick, he's faithful. When I'm broke, he's faithful. When I'm confused, he's faithful. When I'm wrong, he's faithful. When I'm right, he's faithful. When I'm crying, he's faithful. When I'm confused, he's faithful. When I need it, he's faithful. Never got a busy number. Never got a I'll get back to you. He's always faithful. Wasn't Jesus faithful? I said, wasn't he faithful? Come go with me to Calvary. I'm going to show you faithfulness. He was so faithful, he took nails in his hands to tell me that he could still hold me. He was so faithful, took nails in his feet to tell me I'll stand in for you. Because you don't got what it takes to redeem yourself. He was so faithful, took a crown of thorns on his head to show me I was still on his mind. He was so faithful, he got stabbed in the side to tell me I'm just doing this to receive your pain. He's so faithful, went into the grave, took the sting out of death, took victory over the grave. And somebody say early. Somebody say early. Sunday morning, kept his covenant promise, raised back to life. Now ain't God all right? I said, ain't God all right? Anybody knowing to be faithful? Anybody knowing to be a God you can trust in? I'm so glad I got a savior I can trust in. I'm through. I'm gonna have Reverend Tom come back in a moment. Or Reverend Zuniga rather come back in a moment to give this invitation. But Sister White, I stumbled across one of my mama's old songs. And it blessed me. I don't know what's key it in, but whatever it is, I'm sure I'll flatten it out. <laughs> in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. She would get happy and say, This rock is Jesus. Call me Andy. 
Something in this word spoke to you this morning. I know God spoke to you this morning. So you might be watching at home or here and you say, man, I don't know Jesus like this. I don't know him to be good. I don't know him to be a savior. I don't know him but I want to have a relationship with him. The pastor just said that he's there to take the hurt and pain from me. But all he requires is a little obedience. I'm going to tell you, it's not easy to be obedient. But with God, it's possible. Uh, with him, is possible so if you're watching this morning and you say man I want to I, I want to have a relationship with him the Bible says that all you got to do is confess him and believe in him confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you shall be saved the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that doesn't mean that you won't die. He just says that when you do die, you'll be with him in glory. You'll be with God forever. And he talks about, the Bible does talk about hell. And it does talk about how you will be tormented in pain. In, on fire for all eternity. So Pastor just said, hey, he warned us. Well, I'm warning you right now that there is a hell. So accept him into your heart and live in glory. 
So if you're watching, pray this prayer with me right now and accept it into your heart. Yes, yes. Say, dear Lord, dear Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. God and I need my sins forgiven. God, I need my sins forgiven. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me for all my wrongdoings. For all my wrongdoings. God, forgive me. God, forgive me for not listening to your voice. Not listening to your voice. Father, forgive me for acting a fool. Father, forgive me for acting a fool. For mistreating people. For mistreating people. God, for committing adultery. For committing adultery. God, for robbery. For robbery. God, for cussing and stealing. But God, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died and that you rose again on the third day that I may be forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that for the first time, oh, yes. I want to welcome you yes. into the household of faith. I want to welcome you yes. into the new life yes. that you will live with Jesus. Yes. Now, I'm not saying it will all be peaches and cream, but what I'm telling you is you must get into a church now. Yes. Get into a church where they can continue to feed you the word of God. This is what's going to help you in your walk. Yes. So this next invitation is for you too to get into a church body. Yes. If you don't have a church home and you're here today or you are watching online, yes. DM us and say, I want to become part of this church. I want to become a member. Send us some messages. Let us know that you received him and that you want to be part of this church. Send us your information. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. And we want to know how to minister to you. Or if you're here too this morning and you need prayer. And you're a believer. You have already accepted Jesus into your heart. And you might be the one saying, man, I've been disobedient. I haven't been faithful the way God is calling me to be. Well, you're in the right place. Yes. Trust me, we're not perfect. The Bible says that there was only one perfect, and that's Jesus. Yes. So I know we have downfalls. I know we stumble. I know we trip. But will you get back up? Yes. Will you stand up and say, ah, I messed up. But I want to get it right with God. Yes. I tripped. I got a little dirty, but will you let him clean you up? Will you allow him to do the work that he knows how to do? And that's take what is messed up and make it right. That what is dirty and make it clean. Won't you allow the Lord to work in your life? Won't you come and get prayer? The ministers and deacons are here to pray with you. Now this is not a time to be embarrassed. This is not a time to be ashamed. But this is a time to make it right with the Lord. Won't you come pray? Or if you're watching online, let's pray. I want to pray for you. But right now, God, that servant that read at home, oh God, and watch. God, that servant, Father, that uh, is willing to go here and there, but not to the church house. But God, we want to be in attendance, God. We want our that seat to be filled, God, that we may get the blessing that comes from you. So, Father, won't you help us, oh God, in this walk this morning? Oh, yes. God, won't you speak to our hearts and in our minds, oh God, and let us know, Father, what your will is for our lives. God, we don't have the answers, God, but we know you do, God. God, we have questions, oh God, and we have doubts, and 
God, we know who to come to, Father, right now. So God, in these times of need, oh God, in these times of COVID, Father, help us not to be lazy, God. Yes. God, help us, oh God, not to say it's easy and use this as an excuse, God. Because that's what we do, Father. We use COVID as an excuse to stay home. An excuse not to uh, fellowship. An excuse, oh God, not to pay tithes, oh God, or not to uh, pray. We use this time, oh God, as an excuse, Father. But God, we know you see us, Master. God, you see us in our disobedience, God. You see us in all our excuses, God. But Father, help us, oh God, because we don't want to be like that no more, Father. God, we want to be that servant, oh God, that says yes to you, God, and no to the world. So God, we say we're sorry right now for failing you, God. God, because we're not failing each other, God, but we fail you, Master. So we're sorry. God, we pray right now that you touch somebody, God, that is feeling lonely in these times. God, somebody that's discouraged right now in these times, oh God. God, somebody that is ready to throw in the towel right now in these times, oh God. Won't you touch them, Master? Won't you let them know, God, it's going to be okay, God? God, help us to be faithful, God. God, help us to be attentive to you, God. Help us to stay in your word, oh God, because that's what the enemy wants, God, is for us not to be in your word, not to fellowship, God. And that's where we're most vulnerable, God, when we're not listening to your voice. So, God, we want to hear from heaven, God. We don't want to listen to what the Kardashians say, what Kanye West is telling us, what all these celebrities say is right, God. We don't want to listen to that, God. We want to listen to what thus says the Lord. That's our prayer, Father. And oh God, we'll thank you for it, God. We'll give you all the honor and all the glory because it all belongs to you anyways, God. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for watching at home. Thank you so much, beloved. We love you. We love you. We love you. Listen, we have risen to give you the benediction, but before we go, you can worship the Lord in giving today online. If you will go to www dot nbcbc.org that's the new beginnings webpage nbcbc.org click on the giving tab there beloved it will give you directions and instructions on how to be a cheerful giver the bible says in matthew chapter 6 don't lay up treasures for yourself on the earth where moth and rust destroy or where thieves break in and steal But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Beloved, I don't know about you, but my heart and my treasure is in the Lord. And today I choose to give to him as an act of worship. So on your way from the parking lot today at the the usher's table there, you can give your offering there. Thank you for worshiping socially distancing yourself. Thank you. If you need PPE on the way out, we can make sure that we put some resources in your hand as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tonight, we will be live right here on this page again. The Baptist Pastors Conference meet tonight. My brother, beloved friend is here, the great Dr. Emmanuel Scott Jr., a national evangelist with our convention, and he's gonna be preaching to the preachers. Tonight is preachers only, but you can join us online. What a word, what a time, what a fellow 
believer. If you'll bow your heads with me now for a word of prayer, and don't forget, log your babies on today to the KWZ, amen, wonderful Christian leadership and training for the children and the youth, the crew as well. Join them online for a digital experience that's five star in the kingdom. Our Father and our God, thank you for the warning. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for another opportunity to get it right again. Thank you, oh God, that you trust us with your word, your witness, and your walk. Now, God, as we get ready to go down the mountains, go back into the valley, go with us, go above us, go beneath us, behind us, and before us. Let us sing your praises. Let us point people to the Savior. And we'll be mindful to give you the praise for it all belongs to you now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless to this exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever at home and on land let the church sing together Beloved, have a glorious day. I love you, family.